So here's uh, what I have to offer. It's uh, extracting momentum from volatility. It's pretty much what I try to do every day. I'm pretty sure that's what you guys all try to do every day too. Uh, it's just a way of looking at the momentum through the volatility. So if I progress, just stop me anytime if, if I'm moving too fast. Um, the intent is to go through some basics and then I just want to show you how I trade through the boxes and not necessarily try to impose my will upon you, any of you guys. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, this is how I see the risk and how I uh, use that perception to manage that risk. And so in the end, I'm hoping to walk you through the why, the what, the where, and the when. And, uh, you know, there'll be some uh, uh, show and tell near the end. So can you, uh, can you start just with a quick um, bio of, who you are, what you, what you stand for, and, uh, you know, you're everything about you. <laughs> so forward one slide and like come back one slide. That sounds good. Oh, okay. Gotcha. You got to have that. And, and for a small introduction about myself. I've been a member of the Deep Theory Fund since 2014. Uh, my first profile I created in 2014, I lasted about two years. And then I got a diagnosis of leukemia. So I pulled myself away for a few years. And then I came back under a new profile. Uh, but myself, my background is electronics engineering. Uh, I'm 54 years old, born and raised in Montreal. And uh, I basically moved to a uh, English speaking part of the country in my early teens. And so you might still detect a bit of a French accent. It's something I can't seem to shake off. So uh, in the end, uh, I've been trading for about 15 years on and off and profitable uh, the last five or six years. And the problem I'm having is the 5% commitment. And so when I don't have that 5% commitment, I, I, I seem to do pretty good. But when, when, I have to, when I have to commit to a 5%, I, I get myself into trouble. And it's the psychology that's tied to that 5%. I start winning every day. And by the end of my trading session, I'm now trading to not lose. It, it's a different psychology at the end compared to what it is at the beginning. And it's the same thing I've been having to survive uh, for the last five years. I'm still trying to work my way through that. And so if I go back to that original slide here, uh, the why is because of the reward. And the reward is much more achievable inside of a range instead of chasing a trend. And that's been my perception. I may be wrong, but this is the way I've managed to make my money so far. Uh, there are some pairs that are better to trade ranges than others. And depending on your time frame and your horizons, you may be specifically focusing on those specific pairs instead of trying to catch trends. Uh, we'll look at some of those in a minute. And then which time frames are better than others? And obviously, uh, when, as within the day, would you want to be looking at trading ranges other than uh, all day long? And then in the end, I want to touch briefly on how I do it and how I use the probabilities and axioms of trading in order to exploit that moment. Okay, so... Very simple stuff. All of the stuff you've probably already seen, it's the way I put it together to earn in my pips. And so, uh, let me go through this. And, uh, the market's like an ocean. It moves up and down with or without you. It's how you deal with it. Right? And so it's the same thing with our risk. If I see risk, if I perceive it to be risky, I'm in control. If I lose that control, that risk will take me every time. And that's been the case. If I lose that perception, I get taken out. And for example, an hour ago, I got distracted. I was doing some other stuff. I lost track of time. And I ended up giving back 5% like prior 10 or 11. So I do it to myself all the time. And it's something that I'm conscious of. It's something that I'm looking to fix. and. This is why I'm here amongst you guys to learn more and more every day. And in the end, why I chose to focus on ranges instead of trend is simple. 
Uh, it's focused on a known, validated business model. Right? An insurance company makes money every day by collecting premiums, and they fight tooth and nail before they pay back a premium. And so the same way we trade for two pips and we fight tooth and nail to not lose a stop loss or 36 pips or so on and so forth. It's the business model is validated. It works. It's up to us to manage the risk. And so the next big advantage to trading ranges, it, it, it's process oriented. And so you can follow rules and come out ahead. And in the end, it fulfills my psychology. I need to be told, good job, good job, good job, good job, good job, a million times per day. And this gets the job done. When I was trying to be a swing trader, I was experiencing series of losses, upon losses, upon losses, upon losses. And that was wearing my psychology really thin to the point where I was even thinking about rewiring my keyboard. How can I change the sell button into a buy button? Everything I do is upside down. Right? And so you, you go through this process and this, the psychology drives the hormones, the hormones drive the shear, the shear drives the pain. In the end, you're looking to avoid risk instead of facing it head on. And you give this a couple of years and then you'll walk away very underconfident and with a lot of pessimism. Most people will do this with two deposits and never come back. And so I found myself in that loop and I realized that if I just lowered the bar, as low as the bar can go, my goal now becomes achievable, becomes repeatable, becomes consistent, and I start to win instead of losing. And so I turn series of losses into a series of wins. And so now the psychology is very different. I look forward to that reward. I'm filled with testosterone. Training is exciting. It's pleasurable. I seek that risk every day to manage it, not to avoid it. And in the end, I still have a psychology problem. It's overconfidence, exuberance. It's called hubris. And so this is what gets me hung up every day. I get too far ahead of my skis and then I fall over every day. And it's a common problem. It's not just me. I see this throughout other people I communicate. Some of the pairs to look at, if we're really focusing just on sideways markets, things like the Euro franc, the Euro pound, the Euro New Zealand, they don't typically have a trend. And you'll notice we're not focusing on any USD pairs and nor are we looking at any yen, right? So we're avoiding safe havens. We're really focusing on currencies that are related fundamentally or in a macro environment. And so this kind of keeps things with a lid and a floor, a ceiling and a floor. Things are contained and, uh, you know, breakouts are are are, are uh, limited in scope. And so with that aspect, you can trade ranges on higher time frames without fear of things running away from you in the middle of the night. You know, so if you're looking at just range trading, you can do it on any time frame. And as a matter of fact, it's suitable for any time frame. The market is trading sideways 70, 80% of the time. And take advantage of that. And in the end, the ranges are everywhere. That's what's making up the trends we're looking at. There are ranges upon ranges upon ranges upon ranges. In the end, five of these ranges, six of these ranges make up a trend. And so playing the range is exactly what we're intended to do. And in the end, once you figure out how to play the range, what you are doing is extracting the yield, potential yield from that range. In, in the apiary fund circle, we call that price and time cycles. And so understanding the price and time cycle understand, leads you to understanding the potential yield that this range can pay you. And then if you approach that range with the same probabilities, you have an average outcome every day. And so uh, in the end, you're going to find yourself trading ranges on a time frame where you can actually afford to manage the losses. And so when I try to trade ranges on the daily chart, and if I'm wrong on the daily chart, I lose hundreds of pips. 
If I'm wrong on the one minute chart, I lose 10, 15, 20 pips. Much more men. And this is kind of where I'm heading, right? We have to learn to manage our losses. And time of day, it is really a big part of that. The circadian nature of the market drives our behavior and it drives the market's behavior. It opens and closes on time everywhere around the globe. The calendar is known a year in advance. So we know when the volatility will be there. It's not random. What is random is the actual news release, the, the number release. We don't know what that will be. We don't know the direction, but we know when. And so the participants we're competing against also show up on time every day. They do their job as a schedule. And if you look at the big picture, these events are predictable and exploitable. And in between this volatility are ranges. And so if the news comes out mountain time at 6.30 in the morning, you, within a few minutes, 10, 15, 20 minutes, you have a direction and now you're in the range again. And so you can start to make your money. And if you wait long enough, you will be faced with more volatility, which will settle down into another range. And then more volatility settles down into another range, on and on and on and on. And then by the time you get to the banker's close, you typically have a full day of work already completed. And so it's a lot of ranges in between volatile events. And those events are predictable. And so for us to avoid trends, it's to avoid events, the catalysts, right? This is what breaks us out of our ranges. And so knowing we're in a range is one thing, and then catching the breakout is that's what you're trying to do. This kind of helps you do that. You can see based on time, you're about to experience something and it's the probability that is driven by time, right? So the banker's close happened on time all the time. The UK fix happened every day, 1600 GMT, right? At 8.30 in the morning, there's usually a variable pullback. Sean starts to trade at eight o'clock every day, right? Dave starts to trade at seven every day, right? We, we follow a schedule on purpose and it's driven by this behavior here. And so, but knowing who else is participating and what their goals are, leads us to understand where the traps may be. And that's helped me solve a lot of my problems in the past. And Jeff Crystal is the one that mentioned that, right? He, he said before, we need to compare apples with apples. If you're planning to trade the American session, backtesting in Asia is counterintuitive. It, it sh should, should not lead to, uh, to, to what you're looking for. The, the idea is to study your competition. If you're planning to trade between eight and 10, go back in history and practice the hours of eight and, and you'll better yourself quicker that way, right? So by focusing on what actually needs to be focused and in, in general, trading ranges requires you focusing on bounces and uh, you do so many, many times per day, right? So you're bouncing, 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 bouncing all day long. You're testing for support. You're testing for resistance. It's a matter of assumptions and you're testing your assumptions. And every time your assumption is proven right, you make two or three pips. And if you're proven wrong, you accumulate a little bit of drawdown. And so using small positions, you have granular access to money and risk management, right? Um, overall, you're looking for the average of many, many, many small trades, not one big one, like a swing trade. And that leads to many, many, many small, achievable, repeatable goals. And so that builds that consistency we've been looking for. And because we're focusing mostly on bounces, we end up fixing what retails are trying to catch as breakouts. It, because a breakout is typically a standard name. 
a standard deviation, and it will also lead to a pullback. And so that pullback leads to a break even. And so by making our money with the bounces, we can focus on fixing the breakout if it's opposite to our intended direction. The intent is to stay uh, participating, right? Stay either winning in drawdown or in updraw, right? So you can create, like, I guess you guys call it guaranteed trades. You can guarantee your trade. So now you're in updraw, you're in draw ups, you're using the house's money. It's, it's the idea where we want to, we want to be able to, to engineer this, this out. And you do so with small, manageable uh, positions. The focus is really on the core patterns and the axioms of trading, which drive this thesis. These bounces are taking place because of these axioms. And so if I go very briefly, axiom number one is the test of support or resistance. And we know that test has been validated if it's actually bouncing. The bouncing itself, the moving away from that line makes us two pips. The rest of the move is a swing. Right, so we're making our two pips, two pips, two pips because of the bouncing, because of axiom number one right here. This is our money. And when axiom number two comes into play, it's the lack of the bounce. It, it's the beginning of a trend. And so understanding the difference between the two events is a life and death situation for us, right? In one case, we're making easy money. In the next case, we're now in a fix-it situation. We're now having to deal with the situation. And the two axioms lead to axiom number three. When this event happens over and over and over, you're now building pullbacks upon pullbacks. You're, you're anticipating to be change in momentum. You're anticipating a change in direction based on the slowing momentum or the speeding momentum. So these three axioms tell us how we are making our two pips, two pips, two pips, or how we're going to move in order to make our two pips, two pips, two pips. Right? So the axioms don't lie. They, it's like gravity. There are known truths, and I just have to follow them um, for what they are. I do so using, probably seen this through, uh, I think it's Nate's video from the 2012 summit. I extracted this slide from that video. Uh, basically, we're looking at standard deviation. The standard with deviation we choose to operate with is made up of many smaller standard deviations, many smaller ranges. And the ranges within the ranges is what we end up trading, a trend within the trend, the intermediate trend, so on and so forth. And so I've come up with, uh, I come up to realize that this little box, I can reuse the same box every day. And since so instead of calculating a new box for the same time period daily, just read the same box daily. And it leads me to probabilities distributed over time. I've been doing this now for over a year with the same box and I have accumulated track record. That track record leads me to believe I'm on the right track. And so I'm not going to change what's working. And in doing so, I, I end up with some variable assumptions. Right? I know they're just assumptions, but I use them a, as a default setting in my mind. And so if I, if I draw horizontal lines on a one-hour chart and I draw enough of them, where I can connect support and resistance throughout the whole chart, I will have lines pretty much every nine pips. And if I repeat the same process on a five minute chart, I will end up with lines pretty much every three pips. And so this tells me I have reasons to expect bounces every so often. And it's just a bounce. I'm not, I don't care for the entire moon. I'm just looking for bouncing shit. The bouncing makes me two or three pips. And every time I can reset that trade. 
And so I allow myself a box, a, a environment uh, of nine pips. And this box comes from a five minute chart. And so I calculated this box the same way we saw in that video from the 2012 summit, a box on a five minute chart. And I did so in the Asia session and it over and over and over leads me to a nine pip box. And so this nine pip box, I started using as a standard unit of measure, like a measuring cup in your kitchen. And every day I measure volatility with this measuring cup. And before the war in Ukraine, the market was moving seven to eight cups per day. After the war, instantly, the market started moving 10 to 11 cups per day. And so it, it was, it's a change in volatility, but the cup size never changes, right? And so I'm using this cup as a standard assumption, and then I behave according to the box. The same way Nate told us, right? Uh, the same way Nate told us in the video, if we break the top of the box, we expect more of the same because we have time remaining. If we break the side of the box, we have used up all of time. A change in behavior. We expect to do something because the time is up. And this is what leads me to reusing that same box. It leads me to having the same behavior all the time. And so now because I have standards throughout my process and I'm standardizing my behavior, I end up with more or less of a standard out. And I'm trying to build upon that every day. And I'm using time of day to structure the business. So I start on time, I finish on time, and that leads me to mitigate risk most of the time. And so uh, this is how I've been dealing with volatility. I use one box of nine pips and I allow myself up to four boxes before I, e I eventually reach my stop loss of 36. And so by definition, I'm willing to survive 36 pips of wiggle in order to eventually make the two pips that I'm looking for. Right, so I'm looking to survive the intermediate trend. And so if I go to my platform, this is the box. This is the beginning of the Asia session right here. And so for the last, well, for the first three hours of the new day, 3 p.m., the beginning of the new day, the first three hours, the market went sideways and it was contained to my little box. And then right here at the 6 p.m. hour, the market fell from one box to the next box. And at this very moment right here, we broke out of the box and we did so earlier than we would have expected. Right? We would have expected to come here. The market broke out earlier. That leads me to another box. And this one gave us a hash on the standard deviation. And that in itself completed the down leg. Right? And so if I just look at the down leg itself, that was two and a half boxes or 25 pips. If I just from here start to look forward, I remove these and then I put this box right on the low. And what did the market do? It gave us one standard deviation before taking it away. And then here I begin a new box. Now the market gave us three quarters of a standard deviation before taking it away. If I, I keep readjusting this box, I keep catching the standard deviation. And from here, I expect or anticipate one of three outcomes. It can only be one of three. It can only go up, sideways, and where it breaks out, depending on how much time is left, it leads me to the next box. 
right? So I'm always measuring or anticipating only one box at a time. It's almost like I'm forecasting the weather, not days in advance, but just one hour at a time. And within this box, the probabilities of bouncing and making two to three pips are extremely high, extremely high. This is just a, it's a measured move. It's a standard measured move. If I, if I go back in history, even to, you know, yesterday or the day before this, yesterday, I, I reuse this same box all day, every day, and I just behave according to the box. Eventually it leads me to a break and that break leads me to more boxes and more boxes leads me to more volatility and so on and so forth. And eventually I catch up. The, the market leads the path. I just follow along with my little box. It keeps me in the realm of reality. It, it keeps me from expecting the market to deliver something it can. Uh, a lot of times I, I used to find myself asking Mr. Market for a shifty pips, please, please, please. I'm willing to lose 25 and the market would take 25 every time. And so every time I impose my will, it never works. In this case, the box comes from the market itself. We measured this from the market. And so now I can expect this box to be delivered over and over and over. Within this box, I, I aim to make two pips multiple times. And so this, the strategy never changes. You guys are all doing that already. You know, you're all trading ranges pretty much in a similar fashion without the box. I'm just using the box to allow me to see more of the same is still coming. I anticipate two to three boxes. And by the fourth box, the fourth standard deviation, you start to expect the probabilities to shift. And it's because of the probabilities that intermediate trend, that 36 pips, has become a standard in my operation. It's a, it's a high probability that the market will rotate within that 36 pips. And so I allow for boxes to accumulate and for myself to keep trading and trading and trading in the same direction anticipating a, a, uh, a pullback or a, a reversal back to the mean. And that reversal back to the mean is usually box two or three. Right? It, it's away from box number four. And so that is a break-even trade. This is how I manage to escape with you know, less loss. And it's definitely not a loss-free strategy. You know, I, I take losses like everybody else. It's when I'm right, my boxes lead me to stay right until the very end. And that's how I end up going from two to four to six to eight, 10% in a day. It, because I, 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 I guess you call it ride the weight. The, the, I just, I allow the boxes to lead the probability. And then when the box tells me I've run out of probabilities, I trust the box instead of my gut. And that's been proven right over and over and over. And so the problem I'm having is at the end of the day, I have accumulated 10% of profit. The new day starts and the new day rolls in. And now I'm suddenly in huge drawdown. And I ended up having to give back a lot of these, a lot of these gains. And this is a, the uh, process that I'm working through. So as long as I can show up every day, you know, compete, compete against the same competition. So at the same time of day, I'm building uh, consistency in everything that I do. And I did so because I'm, I'm allocating a percentage of risk per box. I'm allowed up to four boxes. So I know my max loss. And for the sake of consistency, I don't change my size. I don't change my target. I don't change my stop. I trade at the same time of day all the time. 
I'm using boxes. So my behavior is the same all the time. And in my, in my private account, my MT4 account, uh, this is 3000 trades, two and a half pips each. I think I'm doing okay. The problem is when I hit the wall, I hit the walls hard. <laughs> and so trading like a hummingbird does work, right? Trading for two pips is not the problem. Managing the losses is my problem. This is it. This is what I had to offer. And I ran through it in 35 minutes. So obviously there's a lot of questions here. So the <laughs> biggest question, the, the biggest question that's coming out is, um, is how do you, how do you measure the box? What's the box yield of? Console so, stuff. Yeah. The, the easiest way to get to the box is to look to the Asia session. And if you ever attended one of Jeff Crystal's sessions, he brings the point of looking at historical volatility and in particular volatility at rest. And so if you go to the Asia session and you look at, let's say, 8 or 9 p.m., the market is slow, very boring. That small sideways range is literally, uh, can you see my screen? Yeah. That's, okay, so that small sideways range at 8 p.m. is pretty much the box. If you're just looking to eyeball it, this is the box. This is the box right here. Yep. I, that, so you take the, how do you, you take that box and what's the time frame that you trade every day? You said you trade the same time frame, but what was that time frame? That it's the same as you guys. I trade on the one minute chart, looking at a five minute for my direction. Uh, the way I look at my platform, it's almost like I'm driving a rally. Car. The five minute chart would be my navigator with the map. He's telling me the bands ahead in, in miles ahead. And me on my one minute chart, I'm driving with the steering wheel and I'm dealing with the facts as they show up. And so I'm trading on the one minute chart with my little box. The box itself came from a five minute chart. And so it's a five minute standard deviation and I'm trading it with one minute bars. Okay, so this is it here. Uh, 8 p.m. There, this is our box. And I'm trading this little box with, I'm trading this box with one minute bars. So if I take this mm -hmm. to right now, and then I zoom in to a one minute chart, the, the box doesn't change, but the number of bars through the box increases. It goes from 12 to 60. Right, so now all of a sudden I went from 12 opportunities to 60 opportunities. Does that make sense? If I look at a five minute box, it only has 12 bars in it. There's only 12, so, 12 bars here. Yeah, so let me, let me kind of explain it to the, the way I understand, correct if I'm wrong, but there's just a little bit of confusion out there. So it's not necessarily, there's not, a, there's not this, a same width of that box every single day. It's where you find consolidation between the slow periods of time at night. And so that could be 12, it could be 15, it could be 20 bars. It just, it, it, it's measuring, understand. it's measuring that time frame of the day, the, the time of day. And he chooses the lowest volatility, which is generally between eight and nine, which it is at night, mountain time, which would be, you know, 10 to 11 Eastern, right? Is, yep. it, is that is it? Am I kind of saying exactly what yeah. you're saying? Yeah, I I settled on a twelve bar box, so basically an hour, and just for the sake of consistency. And so from there, it's a bell curve. It's either going to last a little bit more than an hour, or going to be a little shorter than the hour. Either or, I'm I'm willing to wait the hour. So my box is mm -hmm. just a measuring cup. And right here, right. this is screaming at me that we're breaking the box with the plenty of time remaining. And so I should be anticipating a next box right there. Well, so, I hope you get another box because I'm shorting it right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, if my probabilities are correct, but then the next hour, we should see nine more pips. And that's typically what will happen, right? It will move standard deviations upon standard deviation. And at the end of the day, 
10, 12 of these boxes, you've created the whole day of work. So I love, I, I, I love, I'm seeing a lot of similarities, be, I mean, a lot of similarities between the way I trade and the, and the way that you trade, right? I think what, obviously the biggest difference is the box, but I, what I do every single morning is I draw a box similar. I know where my top ranges are and I know where my bottom ranges are, right? Yeah. And so even though it's not an exact box, I know where a possible breakout is, but this helps you to identify that and keep it on the chart all the time. Not only does it help you to identify where your breakout ranges are, it also help you, helps you to identify potential bounce points and your and, and when it crosses here, it's likely to come here or up here. It also does something that a lot of traders struggle with, which I love, which is the confidence that if they're into... Let's say they're into um, the wrong that they're, you're you're selling here, and it comes up to here. It gives you confidence to knowing that these cells are still okay, right? And, and you don't need yeah. to panic that it's going to pop the top and run on you. Do I, you know I, I, I didn't mention that. That's exactly why I used the box. I I used to panic with one little weak extra. No, mm -hmm. that extra little push used to send me in the panic. My box keeps me level headed. Absolutely. Right. It's turned me into a monk so much so, so that I trust my boxes too much now. Mm. Like I, I put all my trade in the box all the way to the edge of box number four. One extra pip and I'm at 36 pips. And so I, I create the problem and then I have to live with the consequences. And the, the living with the consequences is what I'm now learning to appreciate. You no know, peeling off the losses. Sure all that stuff. So it's this box has allowed me to discern the differences between sideways rage and immediate volatility, like this right here, breaking out of the box, plenty of time remaining. It's a trigger in my mind to expect more of the same. And sure enough, the market gave us another exactly nine pips, right? So it, it's, it's this, this box is almost too accurate. Once I start following it, I, I believe in it. And then I, I put almost like blinders on. Once I have my blinders on, I'm oblivious to the changes. I, I can't see the forest for the trees. So. I get that. I, I'm going to call this, uh, I kind of tease uh, Nick Kovacs sometimes about having a Linus blanket. This is what your Linus blanket is, right? This is your comfort. This is what you're like. Okay, I, I need this to. I need this tool, or I need this this comforter for me. The box, and I love it that you found that. That's really awesome, and I love even love love even more that you share that you're sharing that with us. So, I, I just out of curiosity, you've mentioned that at times you're looking for you're you're looking for two pips, right? Do you actually have a two pip take profit on at all times? And what do you do in cases like this, right? Uh, yeah. So I. It, what, at my favorite time of day, so between eight and 10, I mm -hmm. typically aim for 2.7 pips. So okay. I, I earn at least two. I make the market pay for the spread. And mm -hmm. at that particular time of day, the ATR well outweighs my target. I agree with that. I, I guarantee my exit, more or less. Right? So it, it's, it's asking for less than what the market is willing to pay. No, I, I get that. So then do you, in order to get a 10% day, you obviously have to have huge size. Okay. So you go, you change your quantity size. Uh, no, I do. You just click, 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 click. Okay. We got just, it. Things itself doesn't change. I just, I double or triple the volume that I. So you're, so you're okay with trading 100, 200 trades, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. I love, I love that stuff. I, I, I prefer small, manageable, minuscule trades. I agree. I, I love it. You know, I love what you're saying. I, absolutely. I, if I look at my measuring cup, I would rather put sand in it than marbles. I, I had more money, better fill with mm -hmm. small dams. Absolutely. Yeah. And a lot of times, like you, I love how you mentioned that you used to go for 50 pips, you'd risk it with a stop loss of 25. And now... I mean, it's kind of backwards. You're going for two with a stop loss of 35, yeah. right? But you're not really, I mean, it's very, probably very rare that you hit your 35. It happens. 
but you're more likely to hit your two than you are at 35, right? Yeah. Or if I just look away for 20 minutes, all hell breaks loose and now <laughs> I, I'm in fix it mode and I, I'm like uh, chasing my own pill. Because by then I, I have the habit of having too many trades open too early and the fix it now becomes cost. I have to take heavy losses to reopen new trades. So it's a, it's, it's a learning curve and I'm definitely battling my way through it. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it's it basically, I, I love the, the, I love that you've come up with this for yourself, first of all, but I also love how it's very similar and in, in nature of the way I trade. Absolutely, it's the way I trade. I don't have a box, but everybody should get a box. Everybody needs a box, right? And for me, mine is, this is where I trade light, this is normal, and this is light. And so I kind of have three boxes inside of inside of your box, right? And uh, But I, I recognize that and I look at that. Um, and I love that, right? Um, There's a few other things that I've come to notice with this nine tip box too. Four of these boxes will make up a four hour hand. Oh, there you so, go. By trading at the same time of day every day, I'm participating within the same four hour candle there. So yeah. I, can, I, I can figure out my bias based on that four hour candle on a daily basis. It simplifies my top-down analysis, it simplifies my risk, and it makes me more aware of where I am in the bigger picture. And you've been doing this for about a year, you say, draw the box season? Yeah, with this box, I've been forward testing this for over a year now, almost 14 months. And before you had the box, um, how was, was your... Just, uh, I, I was doing okay, but nowhere near these types of percentages. Yeah, no, I, I recently you've been posting like awesome percentages. I think everybody's going to want, want to know what your secret is, right? That's the it. secret is in the box. <laughs> it's the socks right there. It, it, because of this box, it, it keeps me focused, not hours into the future, but just minutes into the future. And so on. I have the top down. I, I do the top down so I know where I am. But I trade reality. I trade minute by minute in my box. And the, I box, love it. the box leads to the next box, the next box. And eventually it leads to the whole day of work. Yeah. And so, yeah, it, it really, it, it's helped me stay on the right side for as long as I possibly. And then I ended up like this morning or this afternoon, I end up holding the bag at the very, very top. And then the rollover comes along and poof. Now I'm responsible at the rollover for, for that drawdown, right? I, I yep. 10% of profit, but at the very top of the day, I'm on the hook for two to 3% of drawdown. The rollover comes on and now I'm, I'm maxed. <clears throat> Did it to myself again. Yeah, but you just got to make sure you have more positive well, days than, than, than losing days. And I think you've yeah. mastered that, right? With your, I don't really want to call it an equity curve because I didn't see any curves. So it's, <laughs> yeah, it, it's pretty the wide. Line, the line. <laughs> it's squat. In between the good days are flat and 45 degrees. The, the, bad, the bad days are basically a runaway elevator. Yeah. And so that that's, for me, it's critical. That's where so, my focus has been for six, seven months now. Let me ask you this, um, which is, you know, purely probably more on the psychological edge, but when you have bad days, how have you learned to accept them and, and kind of brush them off, right? Uh, well, in, in the roundabout way, it means nothing to me. I've, mm -hmm. you know, I've been on the brinks of death twice and with my leukemia diagnosis, sure. numbers on the screen mean nothing anymore. <laughs> It really means nothing. I have bigger worries than numbers on the screen. So if I lose 5%, that's so be it. Tomorrow will be a 6% day. Yeah, that's a great attitude. It's like, no, yeah, miss, and, miss that opportunity, but tomorrow's another opportunity. Right? Yeah. And, and so I, I noticed a, a while ago, every time I would lose 10, 15, 20 pips, my brain immediately wants 11 or 60 or 21. I need one extra just to feel better. Just to feel better. And that immediately forced me into revenge. And so I, I had no choice but to become a monk. And so now <laughs> I 
don't care about my wins and I don't care about my losses. I just yeah. care more about my process. Right. So that's led me to all this probability stuff. And I kind of put aside the risk management. <laughs> and so this is where I'm focusing on now, how to manage my trades. You know, the, the, I love it. the spending of the money. I know where to spend it. I just need to figure out how much to spend. All right. So, yeah. Uh, so I got a few more questions here real fast, if you don't mind. Um, so Sky says the box is, is the box always nine pips? The box is not always nine pips. It really depends on the pair. And he chooses, like I said before, he chooses a low volatility time of the day on that pair he's going to trade. And then he measures that con consolidation during that hour and whatever, however, however many um, bars there is in that consolidation, because that creates his box. Um, let's see, Joseph says, uh, I have a long history of market data on the M5 over the majors and data of average movement. That's awesome. I know he, he does. Absolutely. Um, Pete asks, you only trade in the middle of your box or, or only tops and bottoms? I actually I do both. Uh, the edges of the box are the highest probability of a bounce back towards the middle. Mm -hmm. I, so if I'm at the top, I trade towards the center. If I'm at the bottom, I trade towards the center. If I'm in the center, I only trade towards the edges if I have room for my target. I don't want my target outside the box. It becomes a low probability. I, if my yeah, target absolutely. is in the box, it remains a high probability. And so it's it, in, uh, in the moment, it's discretionary, I guess. You have to wait and see the price action to choose. Right. You no, know, but I, I try to keep the, the plays, the trades in the boxes that includes the target. Right. So, and uh, I'm going to answer this question. Somebody asked, can you do this in Albio? Absolutely. Albio has a box tool yep. that you can draw in Albio. Um, so yeah, yeah. I also I, ask, go ahead. I, I also, I do trade with Albio and I, I, I kind of trade multiple platforms. So I copy my trades amongst the platforms. I, I use this one here, the one you see now, for my drawings. And on Alveo, I just click buy and sell. But it's, it's in conjunction at right. the same time. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, or, uh, or, so go ahead. in average months, how much uh, do you stack out? What for some? Can you oh. say, well, like 10% per day, 15% per day, 20% per day? Yeah, but I also lose a lot of those. Yeah. <laughs> Right, yeah. so I can say it though. Yeah, on average per month, it's somewhere near eleven to twelve percent because oh, I yeah. I still have to take some losing days along the way, mm -hmm. and, but I I still manage to beat myself every month, and so I'm not going to stop. I'm yeah. I'm on I I am moving forward, man. <laughs> but you wait, wait, you kind of you kind of said a ten to eleven percent a month with a defeatist tone. No, that's awesome. <laughs> oh, it's only 10% a month on my money. <laughs> well, a per day, a half a percent per day is fantastic. Right? Yeah, if absolutely. If I can keep it, right? So when I make those 10% days, I, I try to not revel too much in it because I sure. know easy come, easy go. And the way I trade, I'm heavy footed. If, if I know the probabilities are favorable, I go all in. And that's how I get to the 10%, right? And sometimes it bites me back. So, yeah, it's not advisable. Don't do what I do. <laughs> you know, you're not supposed to say that at the end of your presentation. Everything I do is talk about it, forget about it, guys. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Darren asked the percent that you do 10%, that's all combined accounts, or is that just one account that you're? No, that's combined everything. It's, you know, I, uh, a lot of this stuff is practice. And then the two hours per day is where I focus my real money work. And, uh, I, I do that because of the structure, right? I operating as a business as much as I could. And the euro is the cheapest. And so if I'm operating as a business on the euro, I'm managing costs as well as risks. And so that, that's important to me just for those two hours. And then outside of that two hour window, I, I'm more or less discretionary trading inside my little box. Do you trade any other instruments or do you stick with oh, currency? No, currency. Uh, most currencies and only the euro. I do look at 
uh, I look at Dixie, I look at yields, uh, I look at dead end one or bonds, and mostly all the 10 year stuff. I don't look at the short term nor the very, very long term. I just like to keep an eye on the dollar just to see what the dollar is happening and what's pushing and pulling on the dollar. And typically before I start trading at eight o'clock, I will look at the dollar index every single day just to get it. Just to see what's happened overnight, and sometimes oil will have a, had an impact, or you know something has pushed or pulled on the dollar while I was asleep. I I need to see that. Um, let's see. There's a couple more really quick, and we'll ask a few more. But um, yeah, he trades Mountain Time six, or he trades yeah. eight to ten Mountain Time, is what he said. Yeah, um, and uh, there's one question there: fixing within the boxes. Yeah. It's, Pretty much the same way you guys fix. Uh, if I if I go into drawdown, I'm allowing drawdown to accumulate up to the fourth box. And so on a five minute chart, typically that fourth box lines up nicely with a 61% retracement. That's why I'm allowing myself to go that deep. I'm allowing myself to get to that 61% retracement. And if I get the bounce that I'm looking for, more often than not, it will lead me to box two and three, a 50% give. And so I break even. I, I love what you're saying right now because I, I say this every single day in my class and it's just nice to have another voice that's saying it too, where I love it when the market runs against me. I love it when the market runs against me because I know that the more it runs against me, the more positions I can build into for the downturn and it's the same thing, right? The higher it goes, touches that box, the more likely it's going to come back and yeah. gobble up all your trades. And yeah. I'm pretty sure that you love that too because that's when you hit your 10% days, Yeah, right? Yeah, that's when exactly. Runs, when it runs against you. But new traders or traders that don't like that tend to, tend to get scared or timid as it goes against them. And they're like, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, yes! But they yeah. should never be saying, oh, crap. You should be going, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. So, you know, as, yeah. as, the, as the market moves against you because you have the confidence, you personally have the confidence in, in, in the boxes giving you that, right? Yeah. I think there's one last maybe question that I think maybe it would be very, very beneficial for everybody here is if you could maybe go through really slowly one more time how you would draw a box today for tomorrow's trading. So if anybody wanted to try this tomorrow, you could yeah. help them set it up for tomorrow's sure. trading. I think that'd be really, really beneficial. Well, essentially when I wake up tomorrow morning, the first thing I will do is look at the daily chart and then I will compare the new candle with yesterday's candle. And that essentially gives me the lay of the land for today, but for the new day. That information needs to be uh, delved into. You need to look into the details. And so I start to look at the hourly charts after looking at the daily. And I see at 8 a.m., I'm looking at the previous 16 hours. The, the new day is 16 hours old. And that 16 hours has a track record, left crumbs behind. And so it's leaving higher highs or lower lows, and it's leaving a trail. That trail leads us to action points, which so happen to be about nine pips on average. So there might be one that's 11, there might be one that's 13, there might be one that's seven, but on average, they're about nine pips apart. And this is a static default. I choose to use a dynamic default. And so I have the same amount, the same nine pips, but now I'm free to move this around. Instead of having to wait for the price to come to my line, I'm bringing the line to the price, right? And so now I have this little line right there. And if this is so happens to be, you know, 8 a.m. tomorrow morning, I would put my box right on that swing and then expect or anticipate a move in that direction. And if the break happens to the bottom of the box, that begins my new mm -hmm. New box. And that's it. And now this new box has the same expectation, right? It's supposed to lead me to here. It could do a million different things in the box, but eventually lead me to here, right? So this million things 
is what I'm hoping to profit from in the box, right? So the box is delimiting my risk. It lets me know I'm safe or I need something to do or I need to get out of here. And so it's the same behavior over and over and over and over all day long. I only have one, three outcomes. I can't just make up an outcome. Just, I, I have to do what I'm told to do by this box. And so this leads me to following the probabilities as they're unfolding. And it's only one box at a time. If I try to predict the weather two days from now, my success sucks. Yeah. If I try to predict the weather one hour from now, my success is 90%. If I yeah. try to predict the weather one minute from now, I'm almost right 100% of the time. Right? And yeah. so this is kind of the box, right? The box leads me to know what to trust. And then outside of the box, it's now ambiguous. Yeah, that's a, as I, I talk about that, you don't want to forecast, you want to predict. Right, right. right. And the box lets me do just that. Yeah. I know what to expect within my box because it's a standard, it's in the name, right? Standard deviation. And as long as it remains standard, I know how to behave. And the minute it's no longer standard, the box will prove it to me right. because the price will break it. And so... I understand what is normal, and then I know to behave according to abnormal. So yeah, and I just want to make one last comment. Or Lee said, Lee says something. Assuming the boxes are in, in the direction of the trend until it's not. Yeah, like like he's already said, he's already mentioned that this isn't a hundred percent trading. There's no such thing as a hundred percent trading. But what it has done is it's given him success and confidence. I, I'm pretty confident that. That that's the biggest thing is that it's giving you confidence in your trading. And that's what I wish everybody had, right? Is the confidence in their trading. And he's found a tool of trading in the box um, and that gives him that confidence, right? Yeah, it, it's, yeah, and that's exactly it. Before having the box, I, I was throwing darts. I, w I was really hoping and wishing things would work. Now I'm relying more on the probabilities because I've seen it a thousand times over the last 14 months. I can trust this box. And so I've proven it to myself. I'm not trying to prove it to you guys. And so it, the fact that I can rely on it puts me at ease. I, I know now that if I make a mistake, it's me and I'm to blame. I, I, I cannot, uh, pass blame to the market or to my analysis or to the incoming data. It is me that's actioning on that data. So I, I need to see it for what it is. If I misread it, it's happened to me all the time. I, I do this, you know, information gathering. I, it's like building a puzzle, but we've never seen the cover of the box. And so every day we gather pieces of information from different places put them together, and then you find out two hours later, you've been upside down all morning. And so yep. you have to fix, right? But just one, la one last curiosity question. Um, sure. When you know that there's news happening, how do you, how do you, do you avoid trading the news because of? I, no, more than likely, I'm already in a trade. And so I will typically edge that off or peel off some. Mm -hmm. If I can, if I can, I will wait to start after the news. Yeah, because I could see how this box really wouldn't work well in oh. trading news events, right? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly drawdown. That's the big, big impact is the news. If I go to a uh, normal market, like back here, when we had a news event, stuff like this year, that blows through the box yeah. with, yeah. with minutes, like, right? And so this is a trigger. There's yeah. more coming. And so as soon as you know that there's more coming, it gives us one more box. Boom. Yeah. This is a, it's a, so, card, it's a cardboard box now. <laughs> <laughs> and what it, and in a I, rainstorm. <laughs> as, as a filter, as, as a filter, it lets me see the moves for what they truly are. Just normal moves. And I don't need to panic when it's in right. Oh, and then sure. panicking starts when things are abnormal, yeah. like when things are breaking boxes faster than they should, right. 
And then yeah. all of a sudden you're now speeding up process. And yeah, you're, you're basically, I mean, for all intents and purposes, you're trading price action, mm -hmm. but you're using a tool, a filter. To use, a filter. Yeah, that's yeah. the best way to put it. Yeah. So, and if I, I if, love it. It, it is just a standard deviation. So it, right. it, it allows for mistakes. I, mm -hmm. I'm allowed to be wrong with this box, which is beautiful. Without the box, I was trying to be exact and precise all the time. I, I had to have the best entry, otherwise I felt super bad, right? If, if, if I saw a drawdown, it made me feel like crap. So now I anticipate drawdown, I appreciate drawdown, and I exploit it. Oh, I love that. I love that. I love it. And, I, and, and uh, what a difference it makes. No. And it's because I've lowered the bar, right? Instead of expecting or asking for 50, 60, 100, I'm asking for two or three, yeah. and I'm doing it hundreds of times per day. And all just one small change turned my whole world upside down in the right way. So, yeah. So you, said, so you kind of, okay. you said you gleaned this from Jeff Crystal, uh, the box uh, theory, or no, or just, well, really just I, I'm just, I may have missed that part that you started well, no, thinking the, of this as a box, right? Yeah. And Jeff mentions uh, historical volatility over and over and over and over. Every one of his sessions talks yeah. about volatility. And one of his sessions, or many of his sessions, he speaks of, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, volatility assessments. Right. And so you make that volatility assessment, and then you split your box in four quadrants, and then uh -huh. each quadrant has a behavior. I kind of went along with that idea but removes the four quadrants. Got I it. just want to play whatever the box gives me. So, yeah, it, some of that comes from Sean, the way Sean trades for two pips, two pips, two pips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then some of it, the box came from Nate and the 2012 Summit video. Sure. Uh -huh. And then what I do within the box is more or less what you and Jeff were talking about. And so it, a lot of that stuff, well, everything comes more or less from the APRE fund. It's it, it's all you guys. I I'm just teaching the teacher. Yeah. No. You just found you just found something that works for you, and I appreciate it. That's what this. That's what these meetings are are for tonight. Is for everybody to learn. And I love love um, your presentation. So I, I can probably speak for everybody when I say thank you for not only presenting what you presented, oh. but thank you for your time and taking the time tonight. Um, you did an excellent job. I, very thorough. Very clear. Um, appreciate it. Um, like, I, I think a lot of traders who are struggling to find consistency might just be able to pick this up and use this in their arsenal. And that's exactly what I hope to, for people to get from these Wednesday night meetings. Instead of hearing all the time from me and other people, hear from people that are, that are in the trenches that are doing it the same, that have the same process that you guys are going through at, at the same, you know, and, and I, I probably would say that there's traders out there that are struggling with confidence. We'll find whatever your 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 Linus blanket is, and that's what that, that's what this box is, right? It's his Linus blanket. It gives him the security and confidence in knowing that he can be a good trader, right? Yeah, whatever it, that is, right? And it, it it gives me a frame of reference, something to lean against. Yeah. Before the box, uh, I would used to lie. I used to use indicators, and that would mislead me, mm -hmm. or or leave me late to the party. Yeah, or do yeah, or give you a false sense of security because you trusted them too much. Right. And so now I would rather trust into probabilities mm -hmm. instead of trusting into indicators. So you know, my probabilities are more trustworthy. Yeah. So I appreciate yeah, it. Definitely the way to go. You know, I use no indicators other than APR and I oh. just reuse the same box. Every over day. And over day. Yep. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for, for your presentation. Thank you guys for, for, for being here. Such great, great questions. Um, the only thing I would say is that if you, if you could post in Discord, maybe, um, a, a plotted trade session, I think that would clarify a lot of how you're actually doing your trades inside the box. That would be very, very ben beneficial to, for a lot of people that are still kind of trying to grab that concept. Um, but, and, uh, if you could do that, that'd be awesome. But other than that, great, great job. Appreciate it. Thank you. And, and uh, anything, any last, anything else you want to say before we end it or? 
Uh, this no, was you, really good. More yeah. power to you guys. More power to you guys. <laughs> Trading is something we can all do. It's not yeah. necessarily for everybody, but it's definitely something we can all do. And it's changed my life. It's not, it's nothing I would, um, no, I, I'm not going to sneeze at this. I have nothing bad to say about the aviary fund ever, ever, ever. Oh, <laughs> well, you guys have changed my life by this is a for sure. And when you and I first met, you know, yeah. five years ago, uh, Augury, right? Yeah, yeah, that was a life changing moment. Yeah. That day, things really changed. The two pips, two pips, two pips. I experienced it live, right? Sean was sitting one foot beside me, right? Yep. He it was, was awesome, awesome day. I loved it. And that changed my behavior. In that moment, I could see the value of two pips. Prior to that, I was trying to you know, make 20, 50, 60, 100s. And I was losing 50, 60, 100s. It's easier to, to go for less. Absolutely. A lot easier and less stressful too. Yeah. So yeah. again, appreciate it. Um, I, I, love, I love that you're... This is exactly what I want to do. So if anybody, I'm going to put this on YouTube. So anybody that's watching this on YouTube, join the community because this is awesome. This is what we're trying to build. This is what we're bringing. And you, and trading can be lonely, but doesn't have to be, right? Let's all let's all win together and uh, let's all uh, and 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 share your losses because I think honestly, um, when you do share your losses, that when you're vulnerable, that's because that's when you learn the most. So, yep. um. And if you hide your losses, nobody gets, no, you're not going to learn anything. So I appreciate that for sure. All right, guys. Uh, thank you very much. And we'll go ahead and end it there. And uh, we'll see you guys in the morning for some more awesome trading. Trading in the box. <laughs> I love it. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you.